All right, so next we're going to look at an example, which is a, a, a statics problem, if you like, coming from physics. Um, we have a, a weight hanging from a pair of chains making different angles. Um, and we want to figure out the force that is being exerted by the hanging weight on the two chains. And so this is sort of a, you know, Newton's law is every action has an equal and opposite reaction sort of thing that if the weight is pulling down, right, so the weight, and now the nice thing, I guess, we're using imperial units instead of metric, which is normally annoying, but at least um, pounds are a unit of force. And so we have this force which is um, a magnitude of 50, and it's pulling downward. So it's in sort of the negative y direction, negative j, if you want to refer to the sort of standard unit vectors over there. So we can assign that 0, 1, OK? So we have that force pulling down. And so now we have, you know, we can think of kind of two forces, say, f1 and f2 that are pulling back up to counter that force. And nothing is moving here. And so the, the point is that, well, f1 plus f2, right, those two vectors, when added together, should be equal. Well, equal and opposite, I guess, depending. Well, it'll be fine. We can do equal to f. Um, depending on which way you want to think about it. I guess we want the force on each chain. So the force on each chain is pulling opposite those two. So maybe, maybe it is OK to sort of write it the way we did. Yeah. Um, have them pointing that way. Depending on how you want to set it up, there might be sign issues to address at the end. But when we, when we get there, if we have sign issues, we'll deal with them. All right. Now. Um, the, if you look at this solution in the textbook, the, the next thing that the textbook does is it's going to convert the angles that are given into angles that are measured with respect to the horizontal um, because it wants to use a particular formulation for a unit vector. So you can show that every unit vector in the plane in general can be written in the form cos theta sine theta for for some angle theta, right? Um, where theta is measured from the positive x axis as usual, right? Um, so you can, you can take that approach, or you can just sort of use your head and, and just kind of look at, for example, this, this right angle triangle here. We have this angle 30 degrees, say, right there. Um, and, and so then we know that this side up here, well, that's going to be opposite that angle, right? The vertical here is adjacent, so we can, we can do that. Um, and now, of course, this force, you know, this F vector F1, it's not necessarily a unit vector, but it's going to be some scalar multiple of that unit vector. And, and so what we can do is we can say, well, F1, it's going to be some multiple, let's say, M1 of sine, in this case, 30 degrees, and cosine 30 degrees, right? Where we don't know yet know what that m1 is, OK? Um, and now, of course, we know sine 30 degrees is 1 half, so this is m1 over 2. Cosine of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2, OK? So we get that, uh, that factor there. Um, similarly, f2. Um, you know, and so I guess we would have that m1, m1. f2 is going to be some multiple of a vector uh, with opposite side now given by sine of 45 degrees and adjacent side is cosine of 45 degrees. Um, and now there's going to be a sine issue that I'm going to have to address in a second. So let's just sort of put this in. And then we'll, we'll think about how we want to line things up. Oops, sorry, this one is cosine. All right. So now the issue is we, we do have to actually sort of, you know, think a little bit about 
well, which way, which way do I actually want these vectors to point? Do I want them pointing down? Let's say I have them pointing down, as drawn. Okay, uh, let's use our heads briefly. This one is down and to the right, so the x component should be positive, but the y component actually should be, should be negative, right? So we should actually have a, a minus sign here and here, right? F2, down and to the left, so in this case, actually both components should be negative, right? So we should have, in this case, so sine and cosine of 45 degrees are both 1 over root 2. So this is going to be m2 minus m2 over root 2 minus m2 over root 2, okay? And so now we get to this requirement here, f1 plus f2, they have to give you f. All right, so... Um, and f, oh, f is here, right? Um, so f is, again, it's 0 and negative 50. Okay. All right, so f1 plus f2, we add these two together. We're going to get m1 over 2 minus m2 over root 2. And then we're going to get minus root 3 m1 over 2 minus m2 over 2, okay? And that's supposed to equal 0 and negative 50. All right, um, so right now we can actually pause for a second and there's, there's something that, you know, a very basic elemental thing that we may probably should have addressed at the very beginning, and we, I don't think we talked about. Um, what does equals mean when you're talking about vectors? What does it mean for two vectors to be equal? Well, um, two vectors are equal if and only if their corresponding components are equal. So this m1 over 2 minus m2 over 2, that has to be equal to 0. This has to be equal to negative 50. So that gives us a, a pair of equations, two variables, two equations. That's enough for us to solve, right? Um, so from the first one, I think we can say, well, okay, so, so that has to equal 0. So in other words, m1 over 2 has to equal m2 over root 2. So m1 would be 2m2 over root 2, which is root 2 times m2. Okay, so now I can plug that into the, to the next equation. So I get minus root 3 times m1, but m1 is actually uh, root 2 times m2 over 2. Okay, um, minus m2 over 2, and that's supposed to equal to negative 50. All right, um, so what can we do? Well, we can multiply both sides of the equation by minus 2, gets rid of all the minus signs, get rid of the 2 in the denominator, factor out the m2 from what's left, m2 times, so root 3 times root 2, if we want, let's just write that as root 6, that's a little simpler, um, plus 1 will be equal to 100. And so that means that M2 will be 100 over root 6 plus 1. And M1, well, now we can just multiply by the root 2, right? So M1 will be root 2 times that whole thing. So we've got those two. Uh, masses, and now that we've got those, we can come back, we can plug them in. I'm, I'm going to skip the simplifying. I'm, I'm out of board anyway, and it's the most boring part of the problem. Um, we can take those values, plug them back into the two vectors, and we will have the two forces applied to those two chains. Oops, we got to make a quick correction on that last video. Um, I dropped a square root somewhere along the way. Um, let's have a look. It happened here. That should have been a square root of 2. 
Um, so that should have been a square root of 2. And so that kind of complicates things a little bit at the end, doesn't it? Um, so if I multiply everything by 2, it goes away there, just leaves me with the root 6. But then here I'd have 2 over root 2. So this becomes a, uh, actually, a square root of 2. Um, OK, so then that is uh, uh, square root of 2 right there. Um, and if you want, I guess you could factor a root 2 out from the bottom and write 1 plus root 3. Um, cancel that root 2 with a, you could get 50 root 2 on top if you wanted to cancel it. Um, all right, anyway, sorry about that. Um, dropped the square root, fixed it. Um, otherwise, everything is, I think, uh, as expected.